Lift up your heads, all ye gates, and be thou lifted up ye everlasting doors. What kind of dream? And the King kind of, of Glory, he shall come oh, in. There is a majestic entry that he wants to make. There is a majestic, majestic entry. The gates of the temple are about to be lifted. A new God, Somebody a new here is coming into the space. This is what I call the anxious mind. You can label it the anxious mind. Anxious mind. Ah. Uh, so that you can, you will submit to Satan without a fight. Timo will pray. So, when the time for the expiration of your current rent is coming close, then anxiety will come into the picture. What anxiety will do is that it will show you a vision. A vision of where you are evicted from the house. And that that day rain will fall. As they are moving your your luggage, your television. Eh? Anxiety will show you that the moment you got out on the street, rain started falling. And your computer went bad. Your laptop went bad. Your iPad went bad. Your television went bad. And your Vita phone got soaked and became a coat of many colors. <laughs> That's what anxiety will show you. Anxiety will so make you afraid that you will submit in defeat even when Satan has not physically started fighting you. So the object of anxiety is to bring you to a point of surrender. And so Jesus is teaching here. And Jesus says, take no thought for your life. What ye should eat. What ye shall drink. And what for your body. What ye shall put on then he tries to bring us into the realm of reason by saying, it's not the life more than meat and the body more than raiment. Okay, that's 25. I said, you, you jump to 28 then. Jump to 28. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, they toil not, neither do they speak. Jesus is still attempting to address anxiety. Verse 31 there. Therefore take no thought saying, What shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or wherewithal shall we be clothed? Jesus is still addressing the issue of anxiety. So go to the book of Philippians chapter 4 beginning from verse 6. So the first mind that I'm showing you here is the anxious mind. And that's what happens when Satan cashes in on a situation that seems to suggest a deficiency, a deficit, an incapacity, Satan takes advantage of that situation. You are already at war. And this scripture, this presentation that Jesus does here, is, is an invitation for us to guard our mind with accurate reason, accurate thinking that upholds God's fidelity as a weapon and a shield against anxiety. When people are anxious, they take steps that are not rational. When people are anxious, they surrender to the devil's uh, uh, intrigues even without exercising their faith. When people are anxious, they take upon themselves fetters and handcuffs and put on their hands and submit themselves bound to the devil. Are you there? Okay. Philippians chapter 4, verse 6. I'll stop with this scripture. This is still about anxiety. He said, be careful for nothing. Give me this scripture in NIV. NIV. He said, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer. According to the NIV, according to Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, anything that is supposed to make you anxious, is the same thing that should draw you to prayer. So the response to deficiency, deficits, insufficiencies should be prayer and not anxiety. The same things that should make you anxious as the same insufficiencies that should push you 
into prayer. He said, do not be anxious about anything, but in everything, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your request to God. Okay. You will think that in this prayer, when you are praying, are you there? There is a challenge, there is a need, and anxiety is hoping to take the stage and bring you into captivity, but you found prayer and you began to address the issues in prayer. You will think that after prayer, God will solve the problem that was opening the door to anxiety. That's not how God does. Now, the next verse, let me show you how, how God does. And the peace of God, the first thing that God does is that when you contact him, he now ministers peace into your heart. And according to the Bible, that peace is a burglary proof for your heart and your mind against anxiety. What he does is that he, he makes a proof, anxiety proof situation, by administering peace into your vessel. So what God did in this situation is not to change the situation, but to change you. Please help me tell your neighbor. Many times, God will not change the situation. What God will do is to change you by ministering peace, such peace that transcends all understanding. The Bible says, yeah, preach, preach. The Bible says, yeah, you see how difficult it is to preach? I'm telling you what to say and, and you are already aware well. The Bible says, it will guard your hearts and your minds. Hallelujah. So this peace that God is going to release from heaven is a burglary proof on your heart and a burglary proof where? On your mind. Because the arena from whence uh, uh, anxiety is born is in your mind. Oh, I don't have time to tell you the difference between the God of peace and the peace of God. You are going to experience the God of peace and you are going to experience the peace of God in the place of prayer. The journey from praying to answered, to, to answered prayers, you will encounter what? The God of peace and you will encounter the peace of God. So in this scripture, the, the peace of God becomes the barricade, becomes a burglary proof that stays on your mind so that the devil can no longer manipulate your mind and it stays on your heart so that the devil cannot manipulate your heart, which is the entry organ. Such a man that has this peace of God is immune. This is how you should be every day. Immune to the possibility of mind infiltration. So how many minds did we see here? Huh? Oh, just one, the anxious mind. All right. So we will stop here. We have seen the anxious mind. I'm going to show you all the rest. And the reason why I'm doing due diligence to show you all the different uh, possible postures of the mind is so that you can also relate with your own personal experience. And when you know where you are, you can join in the journey as we migrate to that place where we find the peace of God. Are you there? God bless you in the name of Jesus. Hello. I hope you've been greatly blessed by this sermon. Watch out for our next post. And don't forget to subscribe, share, and like our videos. Thank you.